بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد ايها الاحباب a question was asked about how to be a righteous wife and how to maintain or increase the love in the marriage and very important is starting out by the Quranic advice where Allah Tabaraka Ta'ala says fi kitabil kareem ya ayu an nas ya ayu an nas rabbukum alladhi khalaqakum min nafsin wahida wa khalaqa minha zawjaha wa batha minhum rijalan kathiran wa nisaa wa taqullaha alladhi tasaaluna bihi wal arham inna Allah kana alaykum raqiba Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala says fi kitabil kareem O mankind be dutiful to your Lord who created you from a single person. And from him he created his wife, meaning Adam and Eve. And from them both he created many men and women. And fear Allah through whom you demand your mutual rights. And do not cut the relations of the, the ties of kinship. Surely Allah is ever all uh, is ever and I'll watch her over you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees everything that we do. So in all of our relationships, if we can make uh, actualize that by realizing, by fearing Allah azza wa jal, knowing that we have rights over one another, that the husband has rights over his, his wife, and the wife has rights over her husband, and we honor those rights to the best of our ability, taqullah mistata'atum, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, fear Allah as much as you can. We do the best that we can, then we, won't, we don't lose. In fact, we really don't lose because if nothing else, we'll be successful with Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitabi al-kareem, قَالْ أَرْرِجَالُ قَوِّمُونَ لَنِسَا بِمَا فَضَّلَ اللَّهُ بَعْضُهُمْ عَلَى بَعْضُ وَبِمَا أَنْفَقُوا مِنْ أَمْوَالِهِمْ فَأَسْ فَالصَّالِحَاتُ قَانِتَاتُ حَافِذَاتٌ لِلْغَيْبِ بِمَا حَفَظَ اللَّهُ وَالَّتِي تُحَافِظُ وَالَّتِي تُحَافِظُونَ نُشُوذُهُنَّ فَعِذُوهُنَّ وَاحْجُرُوهُنَّ إِلَى آخِرَ آيَةٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says في كتاب الكريم and the shahid is the beginning of the ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah al-Nisa that men are the protectors and maintainers of women because Allah has made one of them to excel the other and because they spend to support them from their means. Therefore, the righteous women are devoutly obedient to Allah and to their husbands and guard in their husbands' absence what Allah orders them to guard. And in that ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Let's us know the rights of the husband. Or actually, in fact, the right of the wives. That men are the protectors and maintainers of the women. That the husband, he is to protect and maintain his wife. And that's because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala favored him, favored the wife, in fact, to where she doesn't have to work. But that the man has to strive and to take care of his family, to work and spend on his family, his wife, and his children. And therefore, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, therefore the righteous women are devoutly obedient to Allah and to their husbands, and guard in their husband's absence. So when the husband is traveling, when he's away, the righteous wife, she guards his property, and his home, and herself, saving herself for her husband. And one of the rights of the husband over the wife is that the wife, she safeguards herself and she gives herself completely to her husband. That when a, her husband desires her and is in need of her comfort physically, mentally, and, how, and, and spiritually, so to speak, then the woman is there for her husband. She is obedient to her husband and she comforts him physically. And this is 
absolutely imperative for the man to have this comfort. And some men, more than others, are in need of the physical comfort from their wives. That their wife, she's there for him. There's no hesitation that when he comes in the house and he needs that comfort, that physical comfort from his wife, that she's there for him, that she beautifies herself. She beautifies the room. She perfumes herself. She perfumes the house and so forth. Going back to the tafsir, the salaf of this ayat, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says في كتاب الكريم الرجال قويمون على النساء بما فضل الله بعضهم على بعض ابن عباس أو أخرج ابن جرير ابن أبي حاتم عن ابن عباس رضي الله تعالى عنه where he said, mentioned in the ayat الرجال قويمون على النساء the men are the protectors of the women ابن عباس رضي الله تعالى عنهما said يعني أمراء عليهن وأن يطيحوا فيما أمره أمرها الله به من طاعته وطاعته أن تكون محسنة إلى أهله حافظة لماله. So Ibn Abbas said about the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa taala says الرجال قويمون على النساء the men are the protectors uh, and maintainers uh, the maintainers of the women. He said, رضي الله تعالى عنهما, he said, it means they are the umara alayhinna. They are the, the commanders, or the, they are the ones who command their wives. You know, they are the rulers over their wives, so to speak. And that she uh, obeys him. She's dutiful. And that in those things... Uh, that he commands, which are obedience, uh, which necessitate obedience to Allah. Those things, if your husband commands you to be obedient to Allah, then you're obedient to your husband in following those commandments. But if he commands you to be disobedient to Allah, then of course, in those fairs, you're not obedient to him. In. And then he said, وَطَعَتُهُ أَن تَكُونْ مَحْسَنَا and being obedient to the husband, part of it is that being righteous and doing good works, doing being good to his family. So also being uh, uh, righteous and, and having good conduct with the husband's family. And preserving his wealth. That also she preserves the husband's wealth. Then Ibn Abbas went on to explain the following ayat after that, Bima Fadl Allah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, In what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given, uh, has favored, Allah has favored one over the other. And Ibn Abbas said, Wa Fadluhu Aliha bi nafakatihi wa sa'ihi. That Allah has favored the husband over the wife in by him spending on her from his provisions and striving in his striving, his striving and his provisions, that this is how Allah has favored the husband over the wife. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَصَالِ hat قَانِ tat." Ibn Abbas explained that. He said, "Asali hat," meaning the, the righteous ones and the uh, obedient ones. He said, "Mutiyat." That uh, those uh, obedient women, the righteous and obedient women, half of that little that they uh, that they preserve in his absence. And Ibn Abbas explained, radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, he said it means that they are uh, يعني إذا كنا كذا فأحسنوا إليهن that if the wife is like practicing this ayah and being obedient to her husband being of the Saudi hat then they the husbands will be uh Righteous towards them, righteous towards the women. So the woman in the husband's absence, she should preserve his property and preserve herself and safeguard herself. 
some of the attributes, if we look to the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, we'll see that he was the best to his wives as he والسلام, said in authentic hadith. And the way in which a woman can try to maintain or repair her marriage is, and these are some, some things that I have deduced from the text of the Kitab wa Sunnah and from experience and from looking into these issues and from other and from, from the ulama is number one, by having communication. It's very important to have communication in your marriage. And we asked one of the Mashaikh, Sheikh uh, uh, Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab al Aqil, Allah Ta'ala, one of our Mashaikh in, in uh, Medina, who is a professor uh, at Jama Islamia, uh, he, we asked him about this uh, issue, and one of the benefits that he mentioned to us was that it's important that the, the husband and wife have tafahim, that they have a, a mutual understanding and compromise between them. And so this only comes by communication, and that both of the partners will have shortcomings in meeting one another's rights. We're not going to be perfect. The woman's not always going to be uh, perfectly obedient, even in those things she should be obedient to. And the husband's not always going to fulfill his duties in the way in which he should fulfill those duties. But having a mutual understanding in your relationship and being able to have some compromise and forgive one another, cover one another's faults is going to help continue to, to have blessings in your relationship and help to strengthen the marital bond. Another thing that will help is let the man be a man. And this means... Practicing that ayat, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, al qawimun ala nisa. The men are the maintainers and protectors of the women. So let the man maintain and let the him protect you. Don't try to, to uh, so fulfill his rights. Fulfill the man's rights. And uh, do not challenge him and threaten his manhood, because this is one of the biggest uh, fitness for, for men in their marriages, is that a woman does not allow for him to have his role of being the man, especially if he is taking care of you. If he's doing his duties, he's paying the rent, he's, he's taking care of you, he's clothing you, he's housing you, he's feeding you, and, and, and being uh, you know respectful of you, then why not give him his right and allow for him to be the man, even if he makes mistakes? Even if he makes mistakes, there's nothing worse than for a man to be challenged. To be challenged and, and threatened in his manhood. This is who he is. This is a part of his being. So give him his rights and be dutiful. Another thing which can uh, be beneficial to help you be a better wife is to cater to your man. Respect him and make him feel like a man. Make him feel comforted. Beautify yourself. This is imperative because the men are distracted. Some men more than others, they maybe they require more than one wife. Or they're easily distracted. So the man has to be entertained, so to speak. He has to be comforted and, and, and uh, his eye kept in check. His heart kept in check. Or he will float away and perhaps be distracted easily. And this can lead to uh, other things. So, for example, if the man comes home and the woman's not beautifying herself, she hasn't even got out of bed yet, uh, you know, whatever the situation is, she's, you know, uh, you know, beautify yourself and be clean and be clean. You know, some women, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rectify our condition in their condition, that are, are not clean. Maybe they don't clean their homes. So the man comes home from work after being tired and he comes to a messy home. No food or burn up household, burnt food. Or the woman is not clean. Some women are not clean. That maybe the woman is not well versed in hygiene. So study hygiene if it's if it be if it's necessary. If this is a problem in your particular relationship, but this is very impor important to some men. Some men especially love a woman. The breath is smelling good. That she brushes her teeth. She takes care of herself. And she, she's clean, she beautifies herself. Some men like makeup, some men don't like makeup. Some men like natural beauty. 
Her hair is done beautiful. She beautifies herself for her husband. This is what a husband likes to be uh, greeted with. And this is very important to keep his heart, secure your husband's heart, lock him down, so to speak. So what to do, what are some advices to do when, a, when the, your, the husband is displeased with you? For number one, if it is physical, then try changing your appearance by beautifying yourself. And, you know, ask him about those things which he enjoys and those things which he likes, those, uh, those physical things, those physical looks, akramakum Allah, how, what, what he enjoys. Does he enjoy makeup? Does he like it when you wear your makeup? Does he like it where you wear your hair down or whatever the situation is, or you, you wear certain clothing and, and so forth? Then find out what your husband likes and give that to him. Uh, number two, if, it is, if he's displeased with your character, your conduct, then try to find out what those issues are. If it is uh, in your shortcomings or if it is actually his shortcomings, that he wants something which is not obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or what have you. But you need to find out those things and you and your husband work on those things to help build your marriage. And if possible... And necessary, seek Islamic counseling. As Allah mentioned in that ayat that we mentioned, that you should, uh, that you should seek, uh, uh, if there's disobedience on, on the part of the husband or the wife, then you should, you know, refer that back to their, to their guardians. You know, take it back to the families, if they're Muslim families or what have you, who can help uh, in that, those affairs. If not, take it to those people who you trust in the community, to the imam. And those people who will not leak your secrets and have a uh, uh, discuss the issues that you're facing in your marriage and try to seek Islamic counseling if, if the husband is open to that. You know, from someone who's respectful, a respectful leader in the community or someone he respects. And it's very important to also have compromises we mentioned but not at the expense of the religion. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the Shaytan.